Hello everyone, welcome back to our YouTube channel AgriEdit. So this is like one of the most requested video from the students who are willing to take the admission for the PG and the PhD through the ICR counseling. So if you know like other than the ICR counseling, if you want to take the seats in IRI, especially like particularly or specifically into IRI, there are also the other schemes, right? So this is what we are going to discuss about like what are the other schemes that through which you can take the admission and this is based on the eligibility. If you are eligible under certain schemes, then definitely you can take the seat. So I have already made a video on the self-financing seat at IRI. So this year, if you know, from the uh, academic year 2025-2026, the IRI has introduced the self-financing seat. But it is not completely about the payment seat. It is a seat which will be given to the students who have cleared the other exams other than the ICR exam. And this self-financing seat, do not get confused, it is only for the PhD admission. The self-financing seat is, is only for the PhD admission, not for the PG admission. So this thing should be clear. And the other schemes which I am talking about, this will be both for the PG and the PhD, for both MSc and the PhD. Okay. I will talk about all the schemes and also I will tell about like the details that you have to know about if you are willing to take the admission under this, any of these schemes. Okay. So firstly, so what are the different schemes that I am talking about? So the different schemes under which the students or the faculty can take the admission directly into IRA for the masters and the PhD. One is like faculty upgradation scheme. The second one is ICR in-service scheme, the departmental scientific and technical scheme and the children or widow of security forces scheme and the wards of Kashmiri migrant scheme. And lastly, the national fellowship holder scheme. So this is about the self-financing seat. See what is this mind like meaning? Why it is called a self-financing seat? So is it like payment seat? No, it is not actually a payment seat. It is a scheme or a, it is a seat that is given to the students. If you know like from the ICR, if you are going to take the admission, so you will be giving the fellowship from the ICR. But through this scheme, if you are taking the admission, you will be taking care of your own finances. Plus the hostel, it is not uh, like it will not be like previously, they will not tell you or uh, it is not assured that you will get the hostel accommodation that is based on the availability plus you will derive your fellowship from the other exams that you have cleared and the national fellowships uh, the other national fellowship schemes like for example if you have cracked a CSIR if you have cracked a DBT or UGC so where there is like allowance where the these organizations are giving you the fellowship for pursuing the PhD anywhere if you take that mission for all those students who have cracked any of these exams with the JRF fellowship holders, they can apply under this last scheme. The other than the ICR, see if you have written the ICR exam or not, whether you are eligible or not. Uh, like apart from that, if you have written any of these other national fellowship exams, then you can directly apply and take the admission into IRI for the different disciplines. But the difference is this is only for the PhD. The above schemes which I'm, which are available in this like uh, uh, the children widow and uh, wards of Kashmiri migrants and this and the department of scientific and technical schemes. So yes, these are also available for MSc and the PhD. But the national fellowship schemes and the in-service and the faculty upgradation, it is for the PhD since obviously like uh, this is from the state agriculture universities. If there is any faculty who is already working in any state agriculture universities, they can pursue their PhD. And the ICR in service, like any scientists who are working in ICR institutes, they can pursue the PhD through these schemes. These are for the PhD, but these two are for MSc and last one, it is also for the PhD through the exams like CSIR, DBT and the UGC. So this notification has been just released by IRI today. So and the Google, like I'll just explain the complete details like how to do it and what is the admission process here and how you are going to get a seat and what are the different things they are going to consider. First thing, what is what about the eligibility? See, eligibility for the first five, uh, for the first five schemes, eligibility for the first five schemes is very simple, that you have to write this ICR exam, PG or the PhD exam, and you have to enter your scores through which you will be eligible. And for the last exams, whether you write the ICR exam, it is not compulsory, but you should be having like, the fellowships of like CSIR, as I told you, UGC, DBT, only then you can apply for this exam. Okay, sorry, apply for this seats. So this is about the basic eligibility. Plus, if you have written this ICR, PG or the PhD, in this you should not be having zero or the negative marks. So remember, and you should not be 
and the university where you have pursued your uh, UG should be recognized by UGC or okay. So next, uh, this is like no zero or negative marks should be there. So this should be the basic eligibility criteria for applying under the first four, five, first five, five schemes for the ICO. Like you, you have should be written this ICRPG or the PhD exam plus the marks, the rank that you have scored. It should be like not zero or negative. Okay. So the de in detail guidelines have been also prescribed, but I will be only highlighting the very important things. Other things you can just uh, go through the log document and see it by yourself. Okay. Uh, first thing. For the PhD admission, there is one Google form link. For the national fellowship holder, there is a separate link. You have to apply through this. For all other five schemes, which I told you, this is the uh, uh, Google form for the PhD. You have to fill it here. And for the MSc, this is the Google form. So you have to fill it. For the national fellowship holder, this is, there is a separate Google form. For the PhD admission under different schemes, different schemes include all the other five schemes. So they have to fill this one. And the lastly, for the MSc and the MTech, the Google form is separate. So please ensure that you fill the right Google form. Do not make any mistakes in that. First thing, what is the timeline? Timeline is very simple. That it is started from like today, the 11th of November 2025, and it will be end by 28th of November 2025. So within that only, you have to fill this Google form and you have to submit it. And there is an online fee. Online fee is like 400 rupees. You have to pay the 400 rupees. The bank details have been given in the portal also, in the Google form also. You have to pay to that bank account and you have to upload that screenshot in the Google form link. Okay. And uh, regarding the educational qualifications, I already told you like for the special schemes, CSR, UGC, GBT, GATE, DSC, these are approved. And you have to be in, like uh, not scored like zero or negative marks and you should be eligible in the ICR uh, rank card or in the score card. It should be written that you are eligible to attend the ICR counseling. Only those students can apply under the different schemes okay don't get confused with the different schemes and the, the national fellowship holders the national fellowship holder the eligibility is different and the different scheme is different for the different schemes you have to write the icrpg or the phd exam but for the national fellowship holders like if you have not written the icr exam also it is fine you have to i have this written this uh, other exams and you should be qualified in that not only the written writing the exam but also you should be having like uh, uh, this fellowships with you okay only then you will be able to get the seat and uh, so how this will work so how the admission will take place for example if you are applying under defense quota right so here and any other quota see you will fill the google form so once after filling the google form they will verify your documents so across the departments like to, based on like total number of applications that have been received under different schemes they will make a ranking okay they will make the ranking and this ranking will not be disclosed to you so they will make their own ranking and based on the ranks so based on the rank and based on like which department you are willing to go based on the rank they will start allotting the uh, seats under different categories and there is like specific rules under different categories different schemes there is specific rules for the different schemes for example if you take about the national fellowship schemes only maximum two seats will be allotted two seats per discipline will be allotted but in total number of seats are anyhow like 52. If there are no sufficient applications in the different department, then it will be transferred to the department where there are more number of applications. But again, there is a maximum capping of five. This is how it is. Like different schemes, there are different number of seats. And in that, they will prepare their own list, of the rank list. Based on the rank list, the top students will only get the seat at IRA. And this thing will not be disclosed or it will not be told to you that this is your rank and you will get the seat. So you have to fill the Google form, wait for some amount of time. After that, IRA will directly release that you have collected and you have been allotted. You can go and admit. That's it. Okay. So this is as simple as it is. But the one new scheme that has been added by the IRA, as I told you, it is like national fellowship scheme. So previously, there were different schemes like Kashmiri Pandit, like uh, the, the military defense scheme was also there. So other schemes like faculty upgradation and the department technical, all these schemes were there. The other five schemes were already there. So there is no much confusion regarding that. If you are eligible for under those schemes, you have to apply for it, fill the Google form, wait for the allotment, that's it. But if you are applying under, like if you are willing to apply under this national fellowship scheme, which is like approved, like which is starting for the very first time. So these are the basic rules. But let me tell you, since you know that this is for very first time it has been implementing in IRI, things will not be that smooth. Don't expect that things will be very smooth. There will be few things uh, that is not very clear in this uh, notification also. For example, if I to tell you that there are general seats, SC seats, SC, but they have not disclosed that how the ranking will be. 
since they have mentioned that for every discipline there will be maximum of two seats if uh, all five students there are five students who are applying and they all are applying for genetics and plant breeding and uh, how in all in the different categories for example five students belong to the different categories one belong to general sc st obc ws all of them are applying so based on based on what things like they will be two seats will be confirmed this is also not clear because they have also specifically mentioned that under general there are 24 seats under sc there are seven seats under st there are three in obc there are 13 and ews there are five so this thing is not clear yet but what is clear that you have to fill the google form even for the self financing seat and after that they will prepare a rank list and this rank list is not the department wise rank list there is a like overall rank list that will be prepared while preparing the rank list you are CSIR, UGC, those score will not be considered. It is only the eligibility. You have to uh, clear that exam with the JRF fellowship, then you can apply for this. After that, how they are going to create the merit list? Merit list is being created by the uh, academic score plus interview. There are two stages, two different things. One is like academic score, which has a total of 75 marks, if you see here, plus you have like interview maximum for 25 marks. This interview, what the details about the interview, like what they will ask, and uh, when they are going to conduct it and for how many minutes it will be, whether it will be offline or online, these things are not yet been prescribed by the IRI. So wait for the detailed notification. If there is any update, definitely we will come up with a video and explain you each and everything in detail. Anyhow, like generally speaking, if you talk about the interview, obviously they will ask you about the particular subject only. So be prepared for that. Plus, you know the marks, it is for 25 marks, you have to attend the interview. So based on that, there are a total of 100 marks. In this academic score, in the academic score, they have mentioned that it is like 10th, 12th, and 10th, 12th marks that they are going to consider. Graduation, the three things 10th, 12th, and graduation. And for the 10th, there is a 10 marks, for 12th, there is 15 marks, and graduation, there is a 20 marks. And if you have done like for post graduation, there is 30 marks. So, how it will be uh, distributed? So, it will be distributed like this. So, they have given an example. As I told you, like it is maximum of 75 marks, in which 10th is. Uh, for 10th, it is 10 marks, for 12th, 15 marks, for graduation, 30 marks, 20 marks, and for post graduation, 30 marks. In this, how they are going to divide? So, for the, they have given the example of breakup of 10 marks. For 10 marks, how they are going to do it? So, now you definitely will ask us, sir, what about 12th? How they are going to compile for 12th? How they are going to do it for graduation? How they are going to do with post graduation? This is also very simple, just do one thing. So, if for 10th, it is 10 marks, for 12th, it is 15 now. Just multiply it by 1.5 for all of this. So, that will give you the 12th. And for the graduation, just multiply it with 2. So, you will get the graduation. For the post graduation, just multiply with the 3. So, this will give the marks that you will be getting. So, you can compile your own marks. Right now, itself, like for the 75, how much is your score? You can do it by yourself by just by observing this chart. So, for example, what is like your 10th percentage? If it is more than 50%, allocate 2 marks for yourself in the 10th. So, if you have scored uh, more than 50% in your 10th, just allocate your marks as like 2. Okay. More than 50 um, marks, uh, for example, if it is more than 90%, allocate 10 for the 10th. Okay. Next for 12th, if it is again more than 90%, allocate, uh, I told you like it is 0.5, allocate 15 marks here plus plus for uh, the graduation if you have scored more than 9 like uh, consider this cgpa percentage same like if it is more than 9 consider that you will be getting maximum of uh, 20 plus 20 plus and for the post graduation if it is again more than 9 uh, cgpa then consider it to be 30 so you will be getting like maximum marks 75 but if it is like less than 90 for example uh, if you are uh, 10 score is less than 90 uh, 70 to 90 then it will be 8 marks here plus for your 12th if it is again 70 to 90 just multiply it with 1.5 so 15 8 are 120 like 12 marks 12 marks here next for the graduation if it is again between the 7 and the 9 cgpa allocate into 2 it is 16 here and for the last post graduation again allocate into 3 8 into 3 it is 24 just add this thing you will get the total marks of the academic score so this will be with you for 75 right now at this moment of time you can decide how much marks you are getting but the rest 25 marks only after attending the interview you will be able to know it and again it is not clear that whether they will disclose the interview marks or overall marks marks or not so that if they are giving any details we will definitely 
tell you. But for now, this is the right, this is the information that we have that you have to fill this Google form and you have to upload all the necessary documents. Like what are the necessary documents that have been asked? So I have also taken the screenshot here. They are asking like name of the fellowship for this. This is like regarding the fellowship holder scheme. They are asking the name of the fellowship and awarded, like which organization is awarding, awarding it. The fellowship letter they are uh, asking to upload and discipline. Discipline you have to mention name of the applicant, father name, mother name, date of birth, communication address, permanent address, like email address and mobile number, gender, category and the category certificate also they are asking. See if you belong to, for example, do, again don't get confused here. See if you belong to, you are not, just upload any document, any category document that you have that you belong to general. And if you have any category document, upload that category document. Do not complicate it. Upload the signature and upload the photograph. So this similarly for different schemes, the same thing, similar things might be asked. So just open it, fill it correctly. See if you feel anything wrong here. Again, start asking us, sir, I have made some mistake. I've done this, I've done this, done this. No, like no one is here to like uh, excuse you or they, no one will entertain these kind of things specifically because manpower is less. Okay, so there will be applications. Again, they will not give to you time to revise it or rewind it or edit it. So please make sure this is a very, very simple task while filling the Google form. Ensure that you make no mistakes. Things should be very clear. You fill the Google form, wait for the IRA that it will tell you like what is the next process and then after that you can get the seat. See for all the five schemes other than the national fellowship schemes, they will, there is nothing much to do. You will upload all your documents based on that they will release the merit like they will prepare a rank list based on that allotment will be directly done and they will give the allotment. But for the national fellowship holder schemes, the next step would be like they will receive, they will check like how many applications have been received based on that they will schedule the interview for the different departments and then they will communicate with you that when is the interview and what they will be going to ask and how they are going to do it. And once they uh, give all these details, we will also come up with again the separate video and I'll explain in detail. But for now, this is the details that we have. And this process will be for all the future years also. So if you're watching this video and if you want to uh, show this to any of your friends, to any of your juniors who are under these schemes, then you can just directly share this video. And uh, I hope like if there are any other doubts, like, after watching this video, like if you have any doubts in any of the six schemes, let me know in the comment section. I'll definitely answer all your queries and clarify it. I wish you all the very best. So deadline is 20th of November 2025. Please try to fill the Google form within that. If you have not got this uh, information right now, so it will be available in the description box. Just click on it. The PDF will be there. In that PDF, you will get the Google form link. You can just directly click on the link and apply for it. And in the PDF, there is a complete details regarding the different schemes. Please go through it once. Do not skip it. Okay. That's it from today's video. Thank you so much.